And in today's video, I wanna talk to men and women about women selling themselves for cheap and society promoting harlotry. Let's talk about it. to the most high Yah Shalom. Thank you for tuning in to another Righteous Spiritful episode. Today I'm back at it in them trenches handling that kingdom business. You know, ultimately in righteousness, man, I'm going against the grain of the societal norm of promoting women selling themselves cheap, you know, for next to nothing. And then society promoting women being harlots. A lot of this has to do with, like I said, the way society has groomed us to be, the sexualization of women. And women really don't know the value of their virtue in being a virgin. And we see biblically that a virgin, she had a high price that had to be paid for her and that had to be paid to the father because she was pure, she wasn't undefiled. And nowadays we look at women that have a high body count that have never had a, 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 a duty fulfilled to them, you know, and oftentimes their expectations and standards are high, almost ridiculous, the higher the body count goes. And then you have the men that have uh, partake in defiling the women, you know, saying, I don't want no woman with a high body count. And this is where you're going to have to put purpose over pleasure, purpose over pleasure. A lot of guys aren't going to like this video. A lot of women aren't going to like this video because you're so used to uh, transactional sex. And when we look in the word, even a concubine had a higher status than a lot of women these days that have sold themselves cheap for sex. And you might not understand what I say, selling yourself cheap for sex. What I'm basically saying is, man, a dude can wine and dine you for a little bit, treat you good, speak sweet nothings in your ear, and then all of a sudden he can be fine. Don't let him have some swag or any of this. You're ready to give up, you know, your body and these men are not committing and fulfilling a duty to you. Women, you gotta be more discerning, but to be more discerning, you're gonna have a spirit, you got to have a spirit that gives understanding. You got to be filled with the spirit. Men, the same thing. Man, if you start looking at these women as, man, if I go inside of her, man, I have a duty to fulfill. I got an obligation to fulfill. Man, that'll, That'll make you think twice, but you know, society promotes women bouncing around from, from men to men. You use uh, Lori Harvey, for instance. You had more, more people, more women telling her, no, if you don't want to settle down, you keep going and doing all of this. But behind the scenes, man, people is, you, people is fucking fornicating being sexually immoral, you know? Uh, women out here, man, you get a guy that truly wants to commit to you, man, you would have made a better decision than allowing yourself to be defiled, going out here having all this transactional sex. And you would at least have some, some covering, some protection, some provision. You gotta think, man, we live in a culture where 304s and harlots are given a platform to try to promote their harlot culture, their 304 culture, and try to suck more women into it. And, and, and it, it's not gonna produce any righteous fruit. You know, when we look at the word and we see, uh, you take somebody like Solomon. Solomon had a lot of wives and a lot of concubines. A concubine 
is a higher status than a harlot. She has a provision, she has a covering, but she hasn't been elevated to the status of a wife. And the concubines in the book had more provision because Solomon was a king. These women were, they were getting up under a king. He, you know, there was a provision for him. But we see these women out here these days, you know, the men going up in these women and don't have no sense of, of duty and obligation in the women allowing it. Women allowing it. And it starts, it starts in uh probably middle school and high school when all this girlfriend boyfriend culture is being uh promoted oh you know they look so cute together i'm telling you parents man you know what's going on at some at some point man that let that boy's flesh is gonna try to talk them draws off that girl knowing good and well that he's not gonna be uh the one that's going to fulfill a duty to her Man, you gotta stress that with your sons, man. You going up inside of a, of a woman, uh, busting all kind of nuts because it feels good. Man, that pleasure comes with duty and responsibility. And you realize men that learn this, men that move like that early on, they just go off busting nuts and you, you, you racking up a body count yourself as a man. I'm telling you, man, you would have less tribulation, less headache, less spiritual warfare if you were saying, hey, man, I'm at a point in my life where I haven't defiled myself and I want what the book says. I want a husband. I want to prevent. Women, you got to make sure, hey, when that man, you know, uh, wants all this out of your body and wants you to be all this kind of freak, man, chances are, a lot of these men are not willing to answer the call of duty to be strong and act like men to be providers to be protectors to be covers but guess what they'll, they'll they'll bust you down and you let it happen you let it happen you know society promotes this transactional set you take a a, a modern woman that jumps around for men it'll always make headlines you know uh such and such now dating this man you got to look at Russell Simmons, dog. Society promotes it. You go, girl, get you a rich man. And these men are not even fulfilling duties to them. Just some old men busting nuts with money. It's the same thing as a harlot. A harlot gets paid for sex. Man, you got women out there that just because a dude let you drive his car, you know, smoke a blunt with you, take you to get some drinks, buy you a pocketbook, you know, uh, fly you out. This is the culture we live in. You will give up your body to this man, not realizing, man, your, 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 your virtue is going down the drain. And you don't realize, man, you are obtaining all of these spirits from all of these men. And then when you come in front of a man that wants you to be pure, wants you to be virtuous, you're gonna realize, man, you're dealing with some strong delusion as a woman. And that man is gonna, he's gonna doggone discern you. He's gonna see all these spirits manifesting on you and not choose you as a wife. Man, I want men and women to be successful in righteousness. Man, I tell you, the way that this flesh wants to go naturally, man, you're not gonna be successful. You're not gonna prosper. You know, the, 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 the prospering comes in righteousness. Man, me as a me as a uh, a husband, man, I look at the patriarchs that were counted as righteous in Hebrews chapter eleven. You know, a lot of them had multiple wives. Man, I don't even want to entertain that because I know it's not just about going up in another woman for for sexual desires. No, it's a you're gonna have to fulfill a duty, and the word tells you if a man takes another wife, takes him another wife. He must not diminish her, you know, her raiment, her food, her clothing. You just don't get to have this casual sex that the world promotes. Girl, I was burning up. Girl, I need, I, girl, I'm trying to, trying to get me some dick, you know? This is what, this is the way people talk behind the scenes. 
you know, young men. Oh yeah, I'm trying to pull up on something, man. Let me call, let me call, see if she'll pick up. I'm telling you, man, if a guy only calls you late night, man, he's not trying to fulfill a duty to you. He's trying to get up in that booty. I'm, I'm telling you, there ain't no way, ain't no way to sugarcoat it. But you realize, man, if you can take this wisdom and apply it in your life, man, you'll be able to cash that check one day and saying, hey, man, I've done a good thing. You know, you don't have to worry about uh, getting with a good man and then him not being able to sexually please you because you didn't done all this freaky stuff that shows that you ain't uh, pure, that shows that you defiled yourself and vice versa. You got men that defile themselves, go out there and do all this freaky stuff. And then when you meet a pure woman, now you're like, man, she ain't, no, nah, she just boring sexually. She ain't, she don't do it for me. Cause you want her to do all this handstand stuff. Cause you didn't defile yourself. You want her to, uh, to be like these porn hub women that you, you know, you watch and partake in. I'm telling you, man, man, men and women, man, we got to change the, the, the way we process, the way we think. Women are, are, are highly sexualized and they're often uh, promoted to sell themselves, you know, sell themselves cheap. Sell themselves cheap. Man, you think about a woman with a baby, a young woman with a baby, man, there's chances... Man, there's a high chance that she's got more people in her corner telling her that she doesn't need a man versus more people in her corner uh, bringing them both in, talking to that man, saying, hey, you went up in her, man. You need to fulfill that duty. Now that the pleasure has subsided, now it's time to doggone, hey, you need to make sure you doggone providing a roof overhead. Make sure they got, they got clothes on their back, food to eat. It's not about just calling her up again Hey, uh, how you feeling today? You, uh, how the pregnancy going? And then you go back to play Call of Duty. Hell no. Hell no. You When you look at a woman, you got to think, man. When the word says when you look at a woman and you didn't commit adultery in your heart, man, that's lust. That's lust. You looked at her and it was not in your mind to fulfill any kind of duty to her. None whatsoever. You just thinking about pleasure. Got to get out of that mindset. Looking at a man, ooh, girl, he fine. Ooh, yeah. Oh, he a ball player? He this and that. You know, he a rapper. And you letting all these men bust all up in you. And you're the one that, in the end, nobody wants to pay what in your delusion you think you're worth. Then you go out and do all this other vain stuff that doesn't warrant the same price as a virgin. A virgin gets the highest price. That's biblical. That's why the priest was told that he had to be with a virgin. How are you going to be a priest with a defiled woman? A defiled woman. You know, you have these women, they, they'll defile themselves, and then you go try to start a business. You go try to buy a house. You go try to get some education. All of this stuff. But at the end of the day, the price is still cheap because you, you, you treated yourself like a harlot when at a bare minimum, uh, the, the concubine had a higher status. She had a provision. You know, you should be aiming for the highest level of provision. You know, not he's got money in his account. He's rich and he's wealthy and uh, I'm going to let him get some cheeks. I'm going to let him bust me down. No, is that man willing to provide for you to take some of that money and actually do what he's supposed to do? No. You got to think, man, all these, these modern women are focused on high value men. And these high value men know that these women have treated themselves like harlots and they'll wine and dine you and then dick you down and then put you back out here. Meanwhile, these women are overlooking all of the guys that are potential providers that want to fulfill a duty to them. Man, I, I'm already dropping too much game on you guys. Close to the Yah Ministries, kicking that thing gun barrel straight. Wow.